thanks again, uh, RP, as well as CMS, for having me here. It's an honor to be in the presence of so many um, subject matter experts today. And I can't think of a better way, actually, to spend this rainy day <laughs> afternoon in Singapore than to be here speaking to everybody. Well, COVID-19 has been a really interesting year, personally, for me, where I have actually worked virtually for a good close to nine months. Um, including joining City um, just two months ago, uh, where you know I literally went into the office, collected my laptops, and has stayed and worked from home since then. But uh, it has also given content a big favorable push to me, because I think that customers have never been this hungry before for content to actually to read, to watch, to learn and to know what's coming up for them and for their companies and the current um, country that they are in. And based on my previous working experience in both B2B and B2C, um, just my personal experience, I think that B2B companies actually do a bit more content marketing to start with, and maybe a slightly better job in general, just because of the nature of the buying journey and the behavior of customers. But in recent years, B2C are actually picking up really quickly on the importance and beginning to use that more to actually build a relationship with their prospects, to raise awareness, and also with customers to solidify the relationship with them. And of course, the bigger the organization, often the more complex as well because of all the different mindsets, the different perceptions, agendas, processes, as well as the understanding that's needed to navigate the organizational structure. So while I don't have a step-by-step -step golden rule book, um, I find that in my experience, the following five broad principles that I'm about to share with everybody actually has helped me to help companies move towards being a more content marketing focused organization. So the first principle I want to touch on is on establishing a content network. So as, you, as mentioned before, big organizations, they have very different products, different offerings, and very often different opinion leaders as well. So sometimes it can feel like you're in a Game of Thrones uh, kind of situation where you, know, you have to deal with so many different stakeholders and their demands. But amidst all of these players, I find that the following few key players are actually your partners in crime in terms of helping you to build a content marketing focus um, organization. So these people are the sales and the products people, marketing, of course, and research. So research um, is important, but very often underlooked because um, research actually is like your fillers on the ground. They know and they can collect intel much like in a wartime, they are like the scouts and the spies, they collect intel in the industries, your competitors, the broad customer needs, and working with sales who actually should know the product offerings as well as the existing customers like the back of their hands and they are talking to customers every day. So these two parties combined, they actually can bring about very a wealth of insights and data and work with marketing who will then be like a tailor or a maestro to piece it all together in a very compelling story and who will also be able to be the experts on the distribution and best go to market strategy to bring that content to life to your target prospects as well as your customers. And therefore, with this content network, you can actually build a support framework, which would be actually key to help you define your content objectives, the roadmap, your value proposition, and importantly, the kind of measurements that you want to establish to measure the effectiveness of your content marketing approach. And with that, it can actually help you to establish the content marketing focus organization. As part of this content network, um, you have to identify content champions who are actually willing to invest in getting the data in the first place that will help to contribute to the insights and also invest in putting this content into different various digestible formats as well as channels of distribution. And in time to come, this network should be your go-to group in terms of governance, content governance, consultations for new ideas, new themes, be your advocates for new content that you want to push out 
help you to promote it internally within the organization, raise visibility for whatever they are doing, as well as to provide accountability in terms of the measurements of your go-to-market plan. Next, the next principle that I want to talk about is more on breaking down of content silos. It's Sometimes um, the bigger the organization, the more eager beavers we have in terms of people wanting to share content, to create their own content. And it's not always a case of whoever has the loudest voice is the, always the right, you know. And, and sometimes they say, you know, as the saying goes, empty vessels um, make the most noise. No offense to, to, to opinion leaders, but I do recognize that strong opinion leaders, while they are important, but they are not always right. And very often, less is more. And there's nothing worse that I can think of um, than people who are or, or companies who are just simply parroting without data driven insights to back what they are saying in the market. And also not knowing what to say next after everything that's been said in the industry by your fellow competitors. That's where customers will know and will expose you for not really knowing your stuff. And very often we also find that content is stronger when it's being pieced together. For example, focusing on a problem at large that we're trying to address as a company through your insights, rather than just a piecemeal approach of product by product that you're trying to sell. Because bundled together, you will have a more holistic content approach that's based on problem-based solving, and you will actually bring out your company's true value proposition for your customers. In this aspect, it's actually therefore important for the company's subject matter experts or content experts or opinion leaders to work together based on common identified themes that your content network should help to piece together which also means essentially marketing, sales, research across different products, different departments, they should collaborate and run a few theme-based campaigns rather than several mini campaigns in silos with different messages. Knowledge sharing, consistent exchange of information plus easy availability of these content is therefore critical, but often overlooked. And it always ends up with situations of where we don't know what we don't know, and we end up creating content that has already been created and in a much better way or much better format. And we end up wasting a lot of time, a lot of resources to, re to recreate the same content that we could have actually just used the money and time and resource to put it to better use and different formats. So I find that it's as much of a cultural and mindset shift as it is actually a tech enablement to provide a platform and a convenient way for people to share info. And if needed, we should always be open to work with external agencies as well to help us weave our content pieces together and also provide a neutral perspective. Because they are very often, they haven't been that involved from day one. There's less of an attachment issues where, you know, sometimes I myself, I can be guilty of because I've been babying this project. I'm responsible for this content. I feel so attached to it that I'm, I'm willing to take a step back and say, what if this actually is not what the customers want to see? So having a, a third party lend a very neutral eye sometimes actually can do a lot of help for the organizations. And importantly, in terms of breaking down content silos, it's also important to ensure that the branding is aligned across your three themes defined. As I think branding silos is just as bad if not even worse than content silos at the end of the day, because it is a representation of who you are as a company to your customers. The next principle, and I think if it's not one of the most, it's the most important one, is actually to always remember to bring the focus back on your customers. I find that it's easy for us um, and also big companies, especially to lose focus amidst all the noise, all the deferring objectives and all the content available. So it's, it's very important to take a step back or two, and then to remember to remind your content network and your stakeholders to always think back about the customers, bring the focus back to your customers instead of what you want to say, purely just to push for sales on a month on month basis, because that is actually more of a short term kind of perspective and very short sighted. 
Content-based marketing, as we know, it often takes longer to see results, but it builds credibility with your customers for a longer term, which is why it's all the more important to have a content network because then they will be your supporters to help justify why we need to put in time, we need to put in money and efforts before you can see the true rewards of your efforts. And also no one likes a hard sell anymore. It's all about what's in it for me, kind of mindset from your customer's perspective and what makes you better than your competitors. Like why should I be spending my time on you and why should I be spending money on you? Therefore, Alongside with content focus and customer focus, it's very important to invest in customer insights, feedback, satisfaction, as well as dissatisfaction, which maybe not a lot of people would hear about. But I find that <clears throat> learning what is not right about what you're doing is just as important, if not more important than knowing what has worked. Because that's only when you know what is not right, that you know that you have room for improvement and that you know what to fix and where to fix it before it's too late. It's part of staying agile, it's part of improvising, and staying ahead of the game. Feedback is a constant and a two-way thing. So while some people can do social listening, I think it's also equally important to get deep dive insights from your regular customers, as well as people who are not your customers yet, so that you get a holistic view and you don't want to hear only the good things, but you want to hear the bad things as well. The other part of the principle, which is to me is also very important, but is not um, done quite a lot or enough yet, is customer segmentation. I think that is key and there are actually many ways to do it. Like for example, you can do it via their life stages. You can do it via transactional or their spending profiles with you and also the stage of their buying mentality. For example, are they currently just casually looking around and not committed? Are they actively scouting and then actively comparing between you and your competitors? Are they actually quite close to making a purchase and it's just a matter of whether you, they can make an informed decision or not, or whether they are a loyal customers and they are actually, you actually rank quite high in terms of uh, positioning to, that, to, to them as compared to your competitors. And it only takes a little bit of a sweetener and then they will be sold. So this, is important and then what you can do actually for customer segmentation is testing and learning with different formats through different channels as well as key messages on your different customer segments and different audience so that you through this test and learn approach you can help you better understand your customers and learn how to build a relationship with them that goes beyond just a transaction or two the other principle i want to talk about which I think Akira and Tara has shared a bit on is the importance of staying true to your brand purpose. As mentioned, nobody likes corporate spiel anymore. And most people can see through companies who don't really practice what they preach at the end of the day. For example, sustainability. It is a hot topic in recent months, especially with COVID. And a lot of companies are jumping on to the content wagon to put forward papers, speaking points, and whatnots on it. So all this is good because sometimes it's a matter of societal expectations, like your customers are expecting you to say something about it. Society is expecting you to say something about it. So you don't want to keep quiet on it. But it's important to bring back the focus and to highlight the exact relevance of what it means to your company's foundational purpose and brand and why it matters to your customers that you care about this. It has to ultimately tie back as well to your company's core offerings and the problems or needs that your company is trying to address for your customers. <clears throat> the worst that can happen actually are content silos in this situation that end up contradicting one another, going back to the point on why it's important to be integrated in your outlook and core messaging. For example, when you talk about sustainability, but then your company is actually selling things that are leaving a high carbon footprint or it goes against the health of the environment as a worst case scenario. Or you have one subject matter talking about why sustainability is about this and another one talking about slightly contradicting view and then sharing um, photos of him taking a flight out somewhere. So that, that doesn't really gel and it doesn't stay true you, to your brand purpose and your customers can see it in a, in a nutshell. 
So good content and content marketing can actually propel your company's brand and better define your purpose in the longer term in the industry as well as the community you serve. Because ultimately, every company has a role to play in the community and in the industry to your customers. And good content marketing to me, it also includes choosing the right partners as well as the right platforms to work with to make sure that these are aligned with your company's own brand purpose and values and not just going with whoever or whatever is the most popular out there right now. For example, influencer marketing, who you choose to work with, why you choose to work with that certain person, the person has to gel with what your company stands for as well. And alongside that, events and sponsorships that you choose to be part of, it's also important to scrutinize these and make sure that they are staying true and fit to your brand purpose as a whole. The next point, planning ahead and staying agile. I think everybody is very familiar with this by now, thanks to COVID or no thanks to COVID. But in general, despite of COVID or not, as mentioned by Akira, he touched on a bit on scenario planning. I think that's important. Then that's why having a content plan, a calendar to me is critical to your long-term success and to also ensure accountability to your stakeholders, both internal and external. You know, it, but it doesn't mean following it so rigidly to a fee that there are no rooms for changes at all. Having the content network would also help companies to be more agile in planning and to help push things through a rather complex kind of a multi-stakeholder structure. Just as nobody expected COVID-19, which literally forced close to 90% of companies to pivot and change their strategy, including what they were planning to say and even do, everyone was thrown off gut, including the companies that I've been working with before and currently. But the difference is, to your customers is actually who managed to say something and provide some form of help and advice to them when they need it most. For example, if you look at airlines, you know, the purpose, if you look at it closely, is not about bringing people from point A to point B to different countries. It's about the experience, right? It's about giving customers the best experience. And so when they pivot their messaging and business because of COVID, to cater for, for flying anywhere or flying to nowhere or in-flight dining services on the ground, it still forms part of the experience that they want customers to receive from them. And so that's how they try to pivot their business plan. And then with that, the content marketing strategy um, to, to drive towards um, this kind of a new goals and objectives. And it's also better to be late or slightly wrong than to be completely silent uh, in terms of scenario planning and things that have happened as part of concurrent events. Because no one really knows what's going to truly happen. For example, for COVID, we don't have a magic crystal ball. Unfortunately, we can't predict for sure COVID is going to be completely cured. Nobody wants to say that. Nobody dares to say that. Some companies might have come up to put out some statements to say, oh, a vaccine can be found and by then we will be all back to work and things like that. And they might be wrong. They found that they were wrong a few months later. But that's better than completely keeping silent and giving the impression that you're completely denial or clueless because that would not do you well in terms of building customer confidence in your products, your offerings, and your company as a whole. Instead, you can see how your plan strategy is fitting in with the current situation re-examine the original plan channels to see if they are still the best fit for purpose based on your current priorities. For example, if paid media spend of X number of amount actually can be reinvested into useful incentives or insights, for example, that customers can actually get and benefit from, and you can actually pack part of, part of this budget and promote it organically, then by all means, feel free to reinvest into something that is more valuable instead. Customers might be curbing on spending at the moment, but they are still listening. They are still watching and they're still hungry for knowledge. They want to know who's willing to stay the course with them. And by disappearing from the channels, they frequent, it might become out of sight and out of mind too fast and too soon when the whole situation blows over. So it's a balancing act that companies need to achieve to see where to park their investment dollars. 
And the biggest mistake I think would be to completely scale down on content marketing. As that, as that would be as good as saying that your customers don't matter and don't want to hear from you. So just as a quick wrap up, I've come to my end um, with my two cents worth of sharing. Hope it's been useful. And I'm, I'm really happy to discuss in further details and do a deeper discussion of any of the principles covered over a cup of coffee virtually or in person. So do feel free to hit me up on LinkedIn.